200,000 glory in Nigel Mansell's unstoppable progress towards the World Championship IndyCar circuit. At McLaren's success, Williams have produced a car that was a class above the opposition. But the driver will always be the vital element in any championship effort. And 1992, at long last, was the year it all went right for Nigel Mansell. Three times world championship runner-up, Nigel Mansell knew it had to be this year or not at all. Forget the gallant battle and the late season charge, the Williams Renault was a car for total domination, and Mansell was in the mood. And Mansell crosses the line. And already the Williams is storming away. It's a terrible Mexican Grand Prix meeting for McLaren. Another consummately easy win for Mansell. And it looks, it looks, it looks like being another famous victory for Red 5, Nigel Mansell. He'd started the season with a record five wins out of five. His grip on the title already seemed total, but as win number six beckoned at Monaco, a pit stop, Senna led. And for the first time this season, Mansell had to give chase. In what was becoming a rather one-sided year, this was stirring stuff. Mansell weaving this way and that way, but Senna won't let him pass. He's got the racing line, he's going to keep it. Mansell second, the perfect sequence had ended, but not his progress to the title, which would be celebrated two rounds prematurely at the British Grand Prix. Nigel was getting a sense of the mood in the days coming up to Silverstone, the warm glow that was soon to become chronic Mansell mania. As he carved out his victory, there were over 150,000 in the circuit, and as he headed to the flag, they were heading to the track. They love him and he loves them. And Nigel Mansell wins the 1992 British Grand Prix in terrific style. The celebrations in anticipation of Britain's first world champion in 16 years. I had to slow down so much because they're blocking the track and actually ran one person over and he was a very big man. Oh, he loved it. <laughs> the car, we just had to leave the car at club. There's no way through. I mean, what can you say? I've never experienced that in my whole career anywhere in the world. And uh, I mean, they're fantastic, aren't they? It's just, uh, it's just incredible. He was almost there, but he wasn't going to pace himself to the title. He won in Germany. And in the next round in Hungary, there was a tire change, a few doubts in the pit lane. But Mansell recovered to force himself into the top three position that he needed to at last claim the greatest prize in the sport. He's second in the race, but he is the world champion of 1992. The contest was now not for championships, but contracts. Former world champion Alain Prost had negotiated a 1993 place in the Williams team. Ayrton Senna said he'd drive for Williams for nothing. But Mansell's dialogue with Williams had broken down. For obvious reasons, everyone wanted to drive for Frank Williams. The team and the car were supreme, but he was looking a beleaguered man. Michael Schumacher's win in Belgium was a glimpse of an exciting future for Formula One, but Monza brought us down to earth. Due to circumstances beyond my control, I have decided to retire from Formula One at the end of this season. Mansell off to race IndyCars in North America, but who would drive alongside Prost next season? That debate would run and run. But what good is a contract if you don't survive to see it? One thing that Formula One has got right is safety. Ricardo Patrese survived this crash at Estoril comparatively unscathed. And in Portugal, Williams were celebrating that miracle and Mansell's record, his ninth victory of the season. The season finished and with it seemingly Mansell's Formula One career in Australia. The collision with Ayrton Senna was a frustrating and incongruous exit, but it didn't change what had gone before. From Williams Renault and Nigel Mansell, the most dominant season that the Formula One World Championship has ever seen. <laughs> Nigel, when you look back on this triumphant season, what will be the outstanding memory? Will it be the title in Hungary or that crowd at Silverstone? I think uh, the crowd at Silverstone was... Uh just something never to be repeated, not for me anyway. Wonderfully emotional occasion. Yeah, I mean, it? I think we won five uh, GPs in England now, and uh, that one just was incredible. 
Now, you're here on crutches tonight. You've had the toe fixed at long last, a, a long overdue operation on that. How is it? Yeah, it's good. Now, Ayrton and uh, Alan sent me an early Christmas present. Go on. They trod on it. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, 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 bounded, you bounded up the steps in Paris on Friday night when, uh, when you took that World Championship trophy. Here it is. You threw away the crutches almost. That really shows your eagerness to get your hands on, on the trophy, or your eagerness to get your hands on Frank Williams, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, we had a nice chat up there, and uh, but what I'd, what I'd say, I've been driving now for, uh, was it uh, 33 years now, if I tell the truth, mm. and uh, obviously been in motor racing a long time, so I couldn't wait to get my hands on that. It all seemed very cordial with Frank on Friday night. Now, tell us honestly, is there any kind of a prospect of, of a reconciliation with Williams which would allow you to drive even occasionally next season? It depends whether you speak uh, one day or the next day. <laughs> so you have hope? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I think uh, the nice thing is is that I've been afforded the opportunity now in America to go for another championship with, uh, obviously, Carl Haas and Paul Newman. But, uh, I mean, I think Damon sitting next to me deserves the opportunity to uh, drive for Frank uh, this coming year because Damon's been part of the package to win the world championship. And uh, he's done a phenomenal job. And at the moment, he's doing too good a job because he's quicker than Alan, and that could be a problem. But there is talk, there is talk of, of possibly doing races, Formula One races, back end of next season, I don't know. Is well, that a prospect? Well, I was in Australia for a week or so after the race, and then I was in Fiji, uh, sort of recovering from the season, and then obviously straight into hospital. And I only arrived here sort of about a week ago, but it's all news to me, and uh, yes, it's interesting, and uh, some of the figures mentioned would be very accommodating. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> put a few noughts on the end for Frank, and he'll be all right. <laughs> IndyCar, quite a challenge for you, different kind of racing. Rumours that Ayrton's going to pitch up there next year as well. That would make you feel at home, wouldn't it? No, no, I've, I'm very pleased to say that I vetoed that when I agreed my deal <laughs> for the whole of America. <laughs> you got that contract. No, right? that, that's a joke. No, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I mean, heck, we're the best of friends. I mean, why not? I mean, he kisses me at every race, hitting me up the back and, and that. No, it's, it's good. We, we finish the season on the best of notes. No, I think whatever happens with it and uh, whether he goes to America or stays in Formula One, it'll be great for the sport. Damon, there's going to be an announcement next week on the Williams drive. Uh, after Estoril and your performance in the test, you must be feeling good about it. Well, I've done everything I can as far as testing goes, and uh, I've left it now to Frank to make his mind up, which... Uh, he, uh, he can take some time over sometimes, but uh, I'm hoping for a decision. Good. I hope that goes well for you. Martin Brundle, you had an outstanding season with Benetton. Anything lined up for next year? No, still working on next year. It's a very unusual closed season. Nigel going across the pond uh, to America and Ayrton still undecided, so I'm going to hang around for a little while. Martin, Damon, you both deserve your chance. But Nigel Mansell is the world champion. <laughs> Nineteen ninety two is me. <laughs> it's not this year. Nigel Mansell. Nigel Mansell. say a few words to the assembled throng. Many congratulations. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit shocked, actually. Um, I think the first thing I must do is uh, salute everybody in this room for the outstanding achievements that they've all made, especially Linford and Sally. They've done absolutely fantastic, but I think in my sport um, we can only do so much on our own, and uh, I think it would be totally amiss of me not to uh, thank uh, quite a few people, so I'll, I'll do it as quickly as I can. But the first person that brought me into my sport many years ago is the great late Colin Chapman, and he gave me my first ever opportunity in Formula One, which obviously has paid off dividends uh, tonight and this year. goes on without saying that many people uh, over the years of, of 12 years, in fact, in Formula One with changing teams, but there's no question that working for the Williams team, which is certainly the greatest team in Formula One at the moment, and 
I spent six years there and having won 27 races with them and culminating in the World Championship this year. To Frank and Ginny Williams, I sincerely uh, say thank you and to Patrick Head, Chief Designer, Adrian Newey, the aerodynamicist and uh, Sheridan Thin, the financial director. And uh, all my other mechanics and everybody in the factory completely and my engineer David Brown who translates all what I say and sometimes it's not so nice what I say on the radio to him onto the car to make it as quick as possible for the race. But we have to ask a question why are we all here this evening? And it's through all the efforts of the BBC and I was uh, fortunate to be in Paris the other night and I think it was only fitting that the BBC uh, had the award for the best television sports coverage in Formula One and other sports and I can grant congratulate Jonathan Martin and the team for that. But I have another unbelievable thank you to make, and this is why I'm here this evening, and that is uh, to everybody out there. And, and uh, something else I must tell you is that two years ago I retired. And um, it was through all your efforts out there that I actually came back to Formula One after driving uh, for Ferrari. And um, I couldn't have unretired without you. And then you stood by me over the last two years. And uh, I've got to say this, that this World Championship is not just mine, it's all of yours out there and I sincerely thank you all for that support. In conclusion, there's one person that uh, has always been behind me and uh, the last 24 years and is the most special lady that anyone could wish to have in their life and, and that is uh, when you've had your last rights given you and you've obviously done a, a few things uh, like breaking your back and your neck and your foot and various other things and she's always there and that's a very, very special wife I have which is uh, Roseanne Mansell who uh, has stood by me through thick and thin and she's just been magnificent and uh, I'd just like to dedicate my world championship uh, to my wife and all the viewers out there and thank you all for making this wonderful evening possible for me and I can tell you out there that this here in front of me is just as good as the world championship. I sincerely wish you all a Merry Christmas and a great new year and for everybody in this room continued success and God bless you all. Thank you very much. The BBC television sports personality for 1992 is Nigel Mansell.